For this one, we want to draw all the isomers, uh, geometric and structural isomers. So what we're going to do, first, it is helpful for me to find the degree of unsaturation, because that will tell me what kinds of structures I'm going to be drawing. So uh, to do the uh, degree of unsaturation, you always compare it to the alkane, which has this formula. And if when n equals 3, h should be 8. But it's only 6. So that means I'm missing two hydrogens. If I divide that number by 2, that gives me the degree of unsaturation. One degree of unsaturation means I have a ring or I have an alkene, a double bond. Uh, maybe I should say, I should say double, yeah, I should say double bond. Okay? So the oxygen doesn't play a part in it? Uh, does oxygen play a part? Not in the counting of degree of unsaturation. Uh, it's not going to affect it. So let's start to draw these things out. I need three carbons. Uh, I'm going to start with the double bond first. So I could have this, kind of a pro, uh, well, a three carbon structure. And I'll put the oxygen on there. That's one possibility. Um, what's another possibility? I can move this double bond. Here. There's another possibility. Um, another possibility is I can move the OH around. So that's another one. And if you think I miss any, please let me know and I'll add that to my list. Uh, let's see, what else could I do? I can make the double bond between a carbon and an oxygen. Like that. By the way, what functional group is this? That's an aldehyde. It has an H on one side, a carbon on the other. Uh, I can put the double bond over here. So that's why, I, I, at first I wrote alkene, and then I realized I should have write alkene, because some of these aren't alkenes. What functional group is this? That's a ketone. Got a carbon on either side of the carbonyl. Uh, let's see. Oh, another one I thought of. You could have a sort of ester type structure, like that. Okay, that's all I can think of right now that just has double bond. Let's go to our other option, which is write the ones out that have a ring. Uh, so we're talking about a ring, three carbons. You could have this. Or uh, I could also make it a four-membered ring if I put the oxygen in the ring. And, uh, what's this called? An ether sort of structure. Okay, so that'd be an ether. That's another possibility. Or I could make the three-membered ring like an ether and have uh, one little thing, one little methyl hanging off of it. Let's see if there's anything else. Those, I think, are all my structural isomers, unless somebody can think of another one. I also want to do my uh, uh, geometric isomers. So I need to find a double bond that could have cis and trans. I think the only one, unless you have another suggestion, is this one. That one I drew as trans, so let me draw it as cis. has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 answers. Anything you think I missed? 
another molecule I could have drawn. This is really easy to miss one. Yeah. Oh, uh, like one of these sort of things, but with a double bond. I cannot because, this is a great question, does anybody know why I can't put a ring in a double bond? Yeah, there's only one degree of unsaturation. So a ring counts as one degree, and a double bond counts as one degree. So that would be a total of two degrees of unsaturation. Uh, and if, if you weren't sure and you accidentally drew it, so let's say you drew something like this, okay? Uh, you could just count it up and it should add up to your total here. So you have one, two, three carbons, that's cool. You have uh, one oxygen, that's cool. But how many hydrogens do you have? Uh, that'd be one, two, three, four. Be H4. You're missing two hydrogens when you put both of those in there. So this actually has, this one right here has two degrees of saturation. So you wouldn't want to put that. Good, good question. Any others that, any question why I didn't add? Yeah. Thanks. Say that again. Oh, on some of these isomers right here, I have OHs or alcohols. And some of them I just have a straight up oxygen. Is that right? Like this one, this one? Why, why is that true? Um, well, O can be in a number of functional groups. If you have one oxygen, that could be an alcohol, which are these over here on the left-hand side. One oxygen could also be an aldehyde, which is this one. One oxygen could also be a ketone, which is this one. Or one oxygen can also be an ether, which are these three. So that's why. If you're thinking, hey, why didn't you do, uh, like if I take that one up there, something like this, and toss off that oxygen, uh, that wouldn't be OK either. Does anybody know why? Can't do this. <coughs> There's only one bond for oxygen, so this will have a non-zero formal charge. So that one's not cool either. Does that help answer your question? Okay, so when you see one oxygen, there's a lot of possibilities for you. Um, so don't just think alcohol or just think carbonyl group. 